We have some preliminary information on the H270 and Z270 chipsets for Intel's upcoming KB Lake platform. If you don't already know, you can, with most motherboards, flash existing platforms like Z170 so that they will support the KB Lake CPUs because the socket type is the same. But there are a few more differences with the new platforms. I'll be going through those briefly today. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by MSI and their new Trident Gaming PC, which is on the table here, and that is a GTX 1060 equipped machine. Very small for about $1,000. Link in the description below for more information. So it's been a little while since we talked about chipsets and their differences. So I think the last time was probably for the Skylake platform. We'll be doing that for this one, and then again for Zen, although Zen's a bit different, and we'll talk about why at that point. For now, the major items to look at with Intel chipsets are the HSIO lanes, or high-speed I.O. and put output. And that's basically Intel's way of assigning lanes to different devices, and the manufacturer of the motherboard has some level of control over to what device those lanes go. So there's a base sort of set of lanes that go to USB and things like that with Intel's platform, but the motherboard vendor can then decide to peel off some of those lanes and assign them to whatever devices they may deem necessary. For example, the Z270 HSIO lanes now versus Z170 have increased by four. So there are four more HSIO lanes with Z270. It's at 30 versus 26 for the Z170 platform. And then H270 is also at 30. This is new. H170 didn't have the same lane count as Z170. In fact, it was 22 versus 26, so it had four fewer. Now, with the next generation, with KB Lake, it will be at parity. So Z270 and H270 have the same HSIO lane assignment. The differences are elsewhere, like multi-GPU support and things like that. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but that's up to speed. So those are on par. H170 was at 22, just kind of for reference. B150 has 18 and H110 has 14. What do these HSIO lanes go to, though? They go to the things like Gigabit Ethernet. I talked about this with the previous chipset comparison. Gigabit Ethernet, you can peel them off if you wanted to to a PCIe slot, though there's some issues there. Uh, you can send them to M.2 devices uh, for SSD support, things like that, and SATA, SATA Express, stuff uh, of that nature, uh, and USB 3. So that's what the lanes do. The base for Z270, in addition to its HSIO lane assignment, the chipset has 24 additional 3.0 lanes, PCIe 3.0, and the PCIe 3.0 config that's natively supported, only supported on Z270, is you can have one by 16 card, you can have two by eight cards, or you can have one by eight with two by four sorted cards. Z170 was the same, H270 is the same as H170, which is a single 16 lane assignment. Now, here's the thing, we talked about this last time too. There's kind of a common misconception where if you have these lanes or chipset PCIe lanes, in the case of Z270, that's 24 of them, then that's more lanes you can put to the GPU. That's not really correct. Technically, these lanes can be peeled off for PCIe slots, and they're kind of meant to be in some cases, but they're more general purpose PCIe lanes. So they're for things like a buy for M.2 device, whether it's through an AIC, add-in card, AIC, or other means, direct means, uh, NVMe devices, things like that is where you'd be peeling those lanes off because they're generally not more than by two or by four, X2 or X4. With the GPU support for NVIDIA devices, at least with multi-GPU, they SLI requires by eight as the minimum. So that's eight lanes assigned minimally for all the GPUs in the system. That means if you've got a by four GPU in there, it's not gonna work with SLI with NVIDIA's setup. Now you could run by four with Crossfire, not necessarily well, but you could do it. So these lanes aren't really meant to be used for GPUs, just kind of putting that out there to make that clear. The CPU itself is more responsible for that side of things. We'll talk about that once KB Lake is sort of launching. That's more responsible for it. The rest is general purpose. Though the chipset does have some dictation, uh, some control over what the a multi-GPU setup support is ultimately, even though those general purpose lanes aren't really used for it. And the next thing, of course, overclocking is the same as always. Z270 allows overclocking, H270 does not. Very simple, just like the previous platform. Memory channels, two channels again, dual channel, and a total of up to four sticks of RAM for the Z270 
the 270 and H270 platforms with two DIMMs per channel. The next specs, I suppose, would just really be all I.O. So I'm going to run through them quickly here. Native SATA 3 ports, you've got six across the board until H110. Max USB ports, 14 across the board until B150 and H110. Max USB 3, 10 on Z270 and 8 on H270. And Intel SRT is supported on most of these. RAID supported on both of these new chipsets. And independent display support is also three for each device, and that's through the IGP. Another note here, Z270 can support three M.2 devices on the motherboard. So that's new, sort of. H270 supports two of them in by four configurations. Z270 supports three of them in by four configurations. That will enable your faster SSDs. And that's the problem, obviously, with SATA. As the world moves away from SATA, we're going to see more M2. We're going to see a more PCIe or NVMe-enabled devices because SATA is a big bottleneck for us in the SSD space. We're hitting that wall where the interface is now the problem, not the device, and that's not what you want. So this is moving away from that sort of tentatively. We're not there yet, but we'll be there eventually, at least for SSDs that are kind of primary drives. Other than this, there's not a lot of difference. These are mostly the same as the previous generation chipset. A lot of the specs are the same. Uh, there's technically Optane support for Z270 and H270. That's kind of exciting, I suppose, but um, the, a lot of it's the same. So if you already know about the previous chipsets, you pretty much know about these ones. There's not a lot to learn other than more HSIO lanes and uh, some differences in terms of the uh, Optane support and stuff like that, depending on which platform you're looking at. So that is all for this time. As always, links in the description below for more information. There will be an article on this with the table that I used here. There's our Patreon link in the post video to help us out directly. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.